head up and hold fire. We're gonna sign up. Hey, this is Chris at Talon Gaming, and today we're looking at House of Ashes. The third installment in the Dark Pictures anthology, House of Ashes ups the ante, bringing you an action-packed story taking place in 2003 during the search for weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. The team sent to investigate finds a whole lot more than anybody could ever imagine. As in the previous games, this one features single player and two player online play with up to five players available for offline play. For more information about the Dark Pictures Anthology, check out our Man of Medan review which explores the topic in more detail and don't forget a review of the second installment, A Little Hope. House of Ashes is rated mature 17 plus and features blood and gore and intense violence. System requirements are a bit higher for the third installment. You want at least a quad core CPU, 8 gigs of RAM and a GTX 960 or R9 380. 12 gigs of RAM and an RTX 2060 or RX Vega 56 are recommended. You also need about 65 gigs of free storage space. Being the third game in the series, I won't review everything in great detail and focus primarily on graphics, sound, story, and the gameplay offered and what sets House of Ashes apart from its predecessors. That being said, the curator does make his return, albeit to a lesser degree. You'll also find the return of quick time events, selectable dialogue, character relationships and traits, secrets, premonitions, and everything that the Dark Pictures anthology was built on thus far. Textures are great, full of detail, and look quite realistic, bringing a real sense of realism to a world that we've never seen before. Animations are a step above the previous two games, and outside of a few oddly placed eye movements, I don't feel like the game really betrays itself in any meaningful way. Cutscenes and cinematics are smooth and integrate seamlessly into the interactive portions of the game. Overall, the visual experience in House of Ashes is quite good, barring a few issues with facial fidelity from certain camera angles similarly to those found in the first two games. Sound effects for the most part are really well done and bring a lot of realism to the audible experience. However, I felt like gunfire in particular didn't sound realistic. Oh, this guy. Fairly minor, but there is quite a bit of firearms usage throughout. Music is another hit like in the first two games, all produced, recorded, and played by a single composer, Jason Graves, during the COVID-19 lockdowns. Kudos to Jason. Uh, uh. Voice acting is quite good and very professional throughout, and while it's not perfect in its execution due to the many twists and turns the story takes, the actors still did a great job. I'm close, man. I'm coming. I'd like to start off saying that the game takes place during the war in Iraq while searching for weapons of mass destruction, and that I don't believe the story itself was meant to be part of some political statement, but more of a convenient backdrop in its location that's steeped in thousands and thousands of years of storied history. This is still a short story, but one that's rich in visual drama and fictional history. Within the confines of a single run through the game, you'll experience a myriad of in-game lore mixed with some real-world conflict to help cement the story in reality. Some may not like it, but I thought the story was quite engaging and enjoyable. The gameplay itself is largely unchanged from the second installment in the anthology, but the default control scheme has been changed to make navigation a touch simpler. A new addition of selectable difficulty levels can help make reacting to quick time events easier for those who rather focus on the cinema-like experience than the bits of gameplay strewn in between. A single play through the story will take you between 5 and 6 hours. There are quite a few different endings to explore as well as some extra content to unlock, many twists and turns to explore, and many, many ways for your characters to find their untimely demise. Be sure to include a friend online or in person to get the most from the game. As with each release in the anthology so far, Supermassive steps the experience up to another level, and House of Ashes is no exception. The game brings a whole new level of action, excitement, gratuitous blood and violence, and an entirely new world of horrors. If you enjoyed the first two games, House of Ashes is a safe bet. If you're new to the series and enjoy horror, this game is surely worth exploring. If you haven't already, check out our reviews for the first two games in the Dark Pictures Anthology. Links are in the description below. As always, thanks for watching everyone. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, and consider subscribing to the channel. This is Chris from Talent Gaming, signing out.